All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the basically the vocab introducing geometry. So we're going to get familiar with all the different basic shapes that will lead us into the rest of the geometry course. So as you can see here, we start out with a point, and a point is just a location in space. It has no size. And typically, we just use an uppercase letter. So in this case, we just use uppercase A to name this. OK, so then. The next shape we talk about is a line. And a line is basically a ton of points strung together forever. And it just continues off forever in this direction and forever in the other direction. A line is determined by, it's determined by two points. So as long as you have two points and you connect them, you'll have a line. Now, line that we use in everyday language is typically wrong in terms of geometry line. A geometry line does extend forever. Usually when we talk about lines in everyday life, we're usually talking about segments, and we'll get to those in a second. Okay, this line I have down here, it has three points on it, C, D, and E. And it also has this little M over here. We'll talk about that in a minute. So all you need to do to name a line is pick two letters. So if I pick C and D, I could say C, D, like I have here with a line with arrows over the top, or D, C, with a line with arrows over the top. It doesn't matter the order in which you write the letters. If I chose DE, that's the same thing. It's going to encompass this entire line forever and ever. So you could have picked these two letters, DE or ED. These are the exact same, CD, DE. They're the exact same line. Um, they're just, I just picked different letters. Um, or I could have used CE. They don't have to be right next to each other. So CE encompasses this whole line. The little M, sometimes it just makes it easier instead of using a couple letters, you just use a lowercase italicized or cursive M. Uh, and you could call it line M or just M, you know, for those of us who want to be lazy. You cannot use three letters, however. So you only need two letters if you're using the points. And so if you use three letters with a line over the top, that is incorrect. So we're just trying to make sure we're all speaking the same language here. All right, uh, so point, line, and then let's look at some examples of lines. This is actually really tough to come up with examples of true lines in our world. Um, very, very few things in life are perfect lines. You know, railroad tracks are like lines, but only, you know, they turn and they don't go on forever. So they're not real true lines. But if you look at a railroad track, and they go straight for a long way. As far as you can see, they look like lines. You know, so that's the best example. The number line, uh, it's kind of a mathematical example here, but this is a true line. It goes forever negative and forever positive. Um, so uh, the next thing is a segment. And so a segment, looks like I'm missing my dot up here. There we go. So we have two points, and they're connected. It's basically a part of a line. But it's a part of a line where it stops on each end. So I have a segment down here. I have a big green segment and that is comprised of a red and a blue segment. So there's a bunch of different ways to write these different segments. So for the red segment, you just have to use the endpoints, so F and G. So it'd be FG with a bar over the top with no dots, so we wouldn't need any dots. And then you could do GF with a bar over the top, no dots again. Or, uh, so for the blue segment, that would be GH because those are the endpoints of the blue segment. So GH or HG, same thing, um, but with the dots on top, that is incorrect. So we would not write those. And then if we want to refer to the green segment, the whole thing, there we would use FH. So FH or HF, it doesn't matter the order. Um, once again, the dots are wrong, and it's also wrong to say the letters in between. So you wouldn't write FGH. That is also incorrect. You just use the endpoints. All right, and then the next shape that's like these is a ray. It's, it's like a segment. It's like a line, but it's you know kind of a hybrid of the two. A race starts at one point, but then like a line, it extends forever in one direction. So I wrote up here, it's a part of a line starting at one point, extending in only one direction. So the right way to write it 
is the letter you start from, so in this case E, and then you write the letter it goes through, which is F, then you write a line with an arrow over the top, and the arrow points to the right, and there's no dot here. So these are some incorrect ways that you'll often see people write it. FE is wrong because it doesn't start at F and go through E. That would be, let's do it in red here, uh, that would be like if we had a line that went from F, oops, from F through E this way. And of course it would be nice and straight if you were writing it. Um, oh, sorry about that. So um, that would be this one, FE. FE with the arrow pointing to the left is incorrect. We always have the arrow pointing to the right, so that's also wrong. Even though it's really similar because it starts at E and goes through F, but it's pointing the wrong way. And then once again, we don't want the dots. So uh, those are the three incorrect ways to do it. The best example I could think of is the sun rays. So the lights, the, the light rays coming out of the sun. They start at the sun and extend in one direction forever. Okay, so now we're going into angle, or next one. There's only a couple more terms left that we're going to talk about. An angle is when you take two rays and stick them together, and they are coming out of the exact same point, and we're going to call that our vertex. So we have one ray sticking up this way, and another ray going this way. So when you put those two together, this thing formed right here is an angle. All right, I have a couple of examples here. And let me give myself some more room. I want to name this angle in as many ways possible. So the first way I would name it, we'll just say angle 1. Uh, that's what this 1 represents. It just says this angle right here. The other way is we can just use the letter at the angle, so angle B. And then there's two more ways. We could start with the one ray, go to the vertex, and then go to the other ray. So A... B, C. So we'd write angle symbol A, B, C. Or you can go the other way. So from C, B, A. You start at the one ray and then go to the other ray. So angle C, B, A. Okay, over here we have a couple different angles. And there's something unique about this one compared to the first one. Uh, we for for angle 2 here, we can name it angle 2. We could name it angle DEF. Or we could name it angle FED. Now what we can't do is name it angle E. And You'd think you could because E is the letter at this angle, but the problem is there's also another angle here, angle 3. And, you know, what does E mean? Does it mean angle 3, angle 2, or both of them combined? Uh, it's, it's just not clear, so we can't do this one right here. Okay, uh, so for angle 3, let's do that one in blue here. That would be angle 3 or FEG. or GEF. Those are the three ways to write it. Okay, so that's angles. Um, the next term is collinear. So this is another vocab term for this unit. And collinear just means, are they on the same line? So could you find two collinear points? Absolutely, that's super easy. You just take any any point and you connect it to another point and if they're on the same line those are collinear so i and h i and e i and anything you know you can just take any two points and there's always going to fit on a line um, as far as three points that are collinear let's see it looks like i think i have one here yeah these three here b g and e those three points are on the same line so those three are collinear uh, and then as far as four points on the same line, we'll click on this one, and we have A, B, F, and H. Those are also collinear. You know, and H, F, and B, those are three points that are collinear as well. Uh, so collinear just means on the same line. Okay, two more terms for this lesson. A plane. Now we're getting into more three-dimensional shapes. 
Um, I mean, a plane is still two-dimensional, but we're going to start doing stuff in 3D with planes. So a plane is just, if we want to write down a definition for this, we'll write down a flat surface. So a plane, we just call it a flat surface. Think in terms of, if you want to write examples down, you can write down your desktop, uh, maybe a whiteboard in a room, uh, the road, stuff that's just a nice flat surface. Uh, the, the difference between all those things that I mentioned and a plane is that a plane actually does extend out forever, much like a line. So true planes in you know real world are, are tough to find. You don't see many of those either, just like lines, because not much stuff extends out forever. There's a lot of imaginary planes that people uh, talk about, for example, like a football goal line plane. Uh, at a football game, if somebody, if the ball crosses the goal line plane, that's like you take an imaginary uh, sheet of paper and take it from the goal line and go straight up. As long as the ball crosses that goal line plane, it's a touchdown. So uh, that's kind of when they use the word plane in football, that's what they're talking about. Um, there's a couple ways to name this. We could use three letters on the plane and only three letters. You do not need more if there are more letters. So say we had another one here that was, I don't know, W. You would not need to list all four letters here. In fact, it's wrong to list more than three. So plain STR is one way to write it. STW would be another way. Um, they also might have a nice capital letter on there, and that just makes it a lot easier. So you could say plain Q or just Q. Um, that means that you're talking about a plane. Okay, so the last new vocab term for this lesson is coplanar. And coplanar just means on the same plane. So I have a box drawn here, and some examples of things that are coplanar would be like A, B, C, A, B, C, and D, um, A, E, H, that's on the back of this box, and then uh, this one's not as obvious, but A, B, G, H are coplanar. Let's write that down. A, B, G, and H are coplanar. And that's, it's kind of hard to imagine, but you take a plane... Uh, like take imagine a sheet of paper and you, know, you could fit it diagonally through this box to connect these two corners okay um, you know so and, and then anything on this face is also a plane one more important thing about coplanar is any three points any three points are coplanar And I guess what I, the way I do this is if you just take uh, your pencil and a piece of paper and you draw two points on there, and then you hold up your finger and imagine, could I take a piece of paper and fit it through those two points and then fit it through the tip of my finger? And the answer is always yes. You move your finger around and then another piece of paper would fit right through that. So. Any three points, no matter what, they're always coplanar. So if you come up to a question on a test where it says, are points A, B, and C coplanar, you don't even have to look at the picture. You know the answer is automatically yes. All right, so to summarize what we've learned so far, a point is a location in space. A line extends in both directions forever. A segment's just part of the line. It stops on both ends. A ray is kind of a hybrid of the line and segment. It starts at one point and goes forever in one direction. Um, an angle, two rays together, and we'll talk more about measuring angles in a different video. A plane extends forever. It's a flat surface, kind of like a piece of paper or a desktop. Collinear on the same line and coplanar on the same plane. So that's it for this video. Next video, we'll get into a few examples using all of these shapes.